Well, it looks like we're back. Today, I'm going to be going over some tips that are a little bit more advanced, but they should help you regardless of how experienced you are. And I've got a pretty big announcement for you guys. I just got my webcam set up and I'm planning on having my first stream on Friday. I'll be streaming over on Twitch and I plan on starting at 2 p.m. Central. So come hang out, watch me do some quests, and watch me die a lot. I have no fucking clue how to stream, so this could be an absolute train wreck. Or it could be great. We'll find out. Regardless, come hang out, ask some questions about Tarkov or about me, and let's start building this community. And when you get a lot better from watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. One of the most important advanced tips that you need to know is to just plan ahead. Knowing what items you need and when you need them is going to really speed up your progression. This is something that comes with playing multiple wipes, so it might be a little bit more difficult for everybody on their first wipe, but I'll show you some tips on learning how to plan ahead when this is your first wipe. The Tarkov wiki has basically everything you could possibly need to know. Oh no, some nerd's telling me to use a fucking wiki. Just do it and you're going to be a lot better off. There are complete lists online that show every item you'll need to complete every task in the game. I'll link this down below so you'll have it as well. You'll want to stockpile as many of these items as you can, so you'll be able to turn in the task immediately once you accept it. Completing tasks is 100% the fastest way to level up in this game, so it's important to prioritize the items that will keep progression moving. Figuring out the items you need to upgrade your hideout is also extremely important. Alright, so the next tip I have is to become comfortable being uncomfortable. The best way to get better at this game is to just do things that you don't want to do. Whether that be going to a map you don't particularly know, or doing quests that seem like a chore. This also comes in the form of running kits that you're afraid to lose. I know this sounds shitty, but the only way that you're going to get over your gear fear is literally just by losing your stuff over and over again. You're using a kit that's a lot better than your normal loadout, so the odds of you surviving should be higher. Detach yourself from the monetary value of your kit and just play like you normally do. You're going to kill a lot more people this way. Alright, so now I'm going to go into some tips that'll help you in combat. If you start getting shot at while you're running out in the open but you don't know exactly where the person is, it's important to still return fire. Regardless of how experienced a player is, they're still going to be afraid of bullets. Shooting some suppressing fire will help scare the enemy, giving you more time to get away. It doesn't matter if you actually hit these shots, but the fact that you fire them will keep the enemy on their toes, maybe giving you a couple seconds to get away. If these shots are coming from behind you, just do a quick 180, shoot a couple bullets, and then keep going where you were going. Next, you can use scavs to your advantage. If you're near one of the choke points of the map and you plan on staying there for a while, you have the option to leave scavs alive. Let's say you're playing customs and you're hanging out in the sniper building that overlooks Stronghold. If there are scavs at Old Gas, you can leave them alive. This will effectively turn them into an alarm system. Old Gas is a really big choke point of the map, and there will be people coming from both directions. If you leave the scavs alive, you'll be able to hear the fight when someone enters that location. This will give you the valuable intel on whether or not someone is approaching your location. Using scavs as an alarm will help you to decide whether or not you want to set up for the incoming PMCs, or run away. A huge piece of advice for fighting PMCs that I've been trying to integrate into my gameplay is the fact that there's always one more. A lot of people play this game in groups, so the odds of there being another enemy after you kill a PMC are extremely high. After you take one PMC down, it's important to not think that the fight's over. You have to clear the rest of the area and be sure that you're safe before looting this PMC. There's nothing worse than getting sent to the lobby immediately after looting the juicy PMC you just killed. Another thing that really helped me get better was playing solo. When you first start playing the game, you normally play with someone who knows the game. These players typically guide you through the maps, showing you where to loot and how to extract. Once you're confident enough in your skill to extract on your own, I 100% recommend playing solo. Playing with more skilled players can be a big crutch and make it hard for you to actually progress in your skills. When I first started playing, I don't think I really actually got a feel for the game until I started playing solo. A lot of the times I would go through maps with my other friends and they would just kill everything in sight before I even got the chance. This made it hard for me to get better because I was never really getting in fights on my own. They were calling all the shots, and I never had the chance to figure out what I was supposed to do. Playing solo puts this all on your back. This makes it so you're the sole person protecting yourself, you're the one calling the shots, you're the one figuring out where to go, and most importantly, you're the one who gets all the loot. Playing solo also has its benefits. You're not constantly trying to coordinate with your teammates, and you know that everything you see is hostile. Playing solo will also benefit you when you go back to playing with your friends. 
If you're doing a raid with other people and end up being the last one alive, the odds of you making it out of these situations are a lot higher because you're already acclimated to playing by yourself. The next important tip to know is to use foliage to cover yourself when you're getting into fights. Run between bushes and trees while you're fighting someone to break the line of sight. This will allow you to reposition on the enemy without them knowing where you are. You can flank them or just hold a different angle and catch them off guard letting you get an easy kill. Constantly moving and repositioning against PMCs is going to be the best way to kill them. You want your location to be unknown, and you always want to be moving. Now I'm going to go over some tips for playing with a group. If you decide to play in a group, it's important to only play with one or two other people. You have the option to play with up to five people, but this makes it a lot harder to coordinate. Keeping track of that many teammates is an absolute nightmare, and you're going to end up either killing someone or holding fire when it's an enemy. My favorite way to play is with one other person. This allows me to have them stream their game and I can have it up on my second monitor. This makes it extremely easy to keep track of my teammate, so I constantly know where they are. If you die when you're playing with someone else, your job is to give them as much intel as possible. Once you die, say where you think they were, say what ammo they were using, and then shut the fuck up. Once you've provided the most intel as possible, it's important to be quiet, because anything else you say is just going to distract them and overpower their comms. One of my favorite things that me and my friends do when we're playing the game is we say the word comms. We use this when we think we hear something or we want to get everyone's attention. In a game where noise plays such a big role, it's important to be able to have everyone be quiet so you can pay attention to what's going on around you. Another really important thing is to pull yourself out of a fight enough to tell your teammates where the people are. It can be really hard to think when you're focusing on your aim, but it's important to tell people where the enemies are when you see them. Letting your teammates know where the enemy is will allow them to be able to help you with the fight. You want to communicate as much information as possible. If you're separated from your teammates, tell them where you are and tell them where the enemies are. Say what they look like, what gun they're using, and how far they are from you. It's also important to know what your teammates are wearing so you don't end up killing them on accident. Another thing that makes playing with groups easier is learning uniform callouts for certain locations. It doesn't matter if these callouts are the same as the ones that the rest of the community uses. All that matters is if you say something, everyone on your team knows what you're talking about. Learning the map's cardinal directions will also benefit you greatly. Being able to make callouts like, hey, I'm going up the north stairs, or I see someone on the south side of the building, is really going to help your teammates know exactly where the enemy is. Now I'm going to talk about some tips about your gear. Choosing your loadout is hugely important before going into a raid. It's important to pick a gun that you feel confident in using. It doesn't matter if you're using the meta gun or something that's considered a low tier weapon. If you're able to get kills with it, then go ahead and use it. When you're building a gun, you can right click on it and click linked search. This will show you all available attachments for the weapon. You can then inspect these attachments and then you'll be able to use them in the weapon modding screen. The most important parts to have on your gun are a scope, a foregrip, and a light. Lights are extremely valuable and will help you in close quarters combat and in dark areas. My go-to light is the X400 that can be purchased from Peacekeeper. A lot of people choose to use low magnification optics like hollow sights or red dots, but this wipe I've seen a big advantage in using long range optics. This will make the cost of your gun a lot higher, but I feel like the investment definitely pays off. Next it's big to not skimp on a backpack. There's no reason to invest a ton of money into your kit if you can barely get anything out with you. You should be running the standard size backpack at a bare minimum. Once you're able to, I definitely recommend upgrading to one of the bigger backpacks in the game. Backpacks can be pretty expensive, but if you insure them, the odds of you getting them back are pretty high. You'll almost always get standard size backpacks back in insurance, and the odds of getting your bigger backpack back are pretty high. The more stuff you get out, the more money you make. So why would you skimp on the one thing that's actually going to make you money in the raid? Now onto armor. Armor is definitely going to be one of the most important choices you make before going into a raid. A lot of people treat running high level armor like they're invincible, but this is definitely not the case. You should think of your armor only as a safety net. Just because you're wearing level 6 armor doesn't mean you'll be able to tank every shot. If you're playing the game the right way, you shouldn't even plan on getting shot in the first place. You shouldn't just blindly push fights because you're wearing high level armor. You should still play the same way you normally do and use the map to your advantage. When you start getting to a higher level, it's definitely important to wear at least level 4 armor. Don't overextend yourself though, and only play within your means. The same goes for helmets. New players tend to think that you need to have a helmet on you at all times. If I'm doing a budget run, I'll probably skip out on the helmet and just wear a hat. This might be a controversial opinion, but it's definitely what I choose to do a lot of the time. Helmets will save your life though, and I'm not discrediting their usefulness. Alright, on to the last tip. The best way to maximize your profit in a raid is by putting stuff into other rigs. 
You can put your items into rigs that you find on scavs or other players and then put these into your backpack. This will increase your overall weight, but it will definitely help you make money in the long run. Putting loot into things like scav vests and then putting them into your backpack will help you make a lot more money. Scav vests have the same amount of slots as they take up, and you can sell them for about 18000 on the flea. Some rigs even have more slots than they take up, so it's important to know which rigs are worth taking out with you. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget to come check out my Twitch stream on Friday, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see all the new videos I post. So until then, stay safe, stay strapped, and good luck out there.